This big fish fishing is completely different. It's it's heavy line. It's really picking and choosing the right bait and getting really working that bait and working your fly line techniques to get your bait out there, which is key, is to get your bait out away from the boat, getting that heavy line out. When you're up to the bait tank, four hand whales on each side. There's three or four baits in each one of them. If you want to reach in easily, pick out the bait you want, come up underneath your bait. Get a hold of your bait, not squeezing them to death so his eyes are popping out before you put a hook in them and put them out in the water because it's not going to swim very well for you. Nice and gently, get your bait, hook it on, and walk away from the bait tank so that the next person behind you can move in, get their bait, and angle over the rail. Your baits are tugging on you, they're taking line out, you're in good shape. The further away the bait gets from the boat, the better shape you are. You're out in the zone where the fish are blowing up, you're going to get bit. You can't feel your baits, again, back spool it or put it in gear and wind up until you can feel your bait back into breeze pull get the bait going again your bait consistently after two or three tries is diving under the boat not going out pitching and the last trip the first couple of days we had current just raging off the back of the boat we had some tangles spectre tangles take an hour for a crew member to get out you're out of commission for an hour i saw there were several people that were in four of those tangles a day. That's four hours of your fishing day gone, standing there waiting. There's a bunch of nooks and crannies out there in your line. So what we need to do is take all those nooks and crannies out so that I can tell I'm over you, I'm under you. Hey, you know what? We're good right where we are. But sometimes it takes a little bit more than just this. It's not going to really hurt you any. Go ahead, put your reel in the gear, take a couple of winds to where you're tight, I'm tight, oh, and it, and it comes crystal clear most of the time. And sometimes there's a wrap and we need, and if one of us were to get a bite, we'd saw the other one off. So 
it's real good to stay in touch with your bait, know exactly where you are all the time. You can't just pay line out because you're asking for a tangle bag, but just kind of make it as easy on the sardine as you can to get into the zone. You come in down here to fish giant yellowfin, it's a lot different than going fishing during the summer where you get into some albacore, some 40, 50 pound yellowfins, and 40, 50 pound bluefins, your normal yellowtail and the kelps, and everybody's doing great, they're having a good time. And even for, even Guadalupe for that matter, where you, every now and then you get a 100 pound yellowfin. Coming down here, lower bank style fishing, open water, fishing for these giants, as in, you know, 130 to 200, 350 pound yellowfin, you're, it's a whole new ball game. Something that's really hard to teach and hard to get anglers to do, especially first time people on 200 pound fish plus, is to relax. At the beginning of the fight, relax. Let your equipment do it for you. Just hang on to it. Make sure you've got a good bend in the rod. Make sure you got pressure on the handle. But don't exert yourself. Make sure your posture's good, that your back's not sore. If you feel your muscles tightening up, you're not standing right. Something's not right. Hour, hour and a half, two hours on a fish. So in the first 15 minutes, if your arms are dead and your back muscles are sore, how are you gonna feel an hour and a half from now when your fish is in color and the crew members are telling you, lift, why, why, you're done. It's, the, uh, it's a technique that, that makes it happen. You know, you can work yourself out by putting too much effort into it and just tearing yourself apart. And we have our hypo on the rail and the rods like this. My fish is straight up and down. I don't want to be like this, pointing my rod right at the fish. I've got absolutely, my rod is doing nothing now. It's all right here on the reel and the line. You want to make sure you're back, you've got a good posture, you're down here, you've got a good bend in the rod. Crew member's going to be right there next to you, just telling you to wind, take this, take that. As the rod tip comes up a little bit, you want to take it. If it's a half a turn, that's a half a turn. If we can take half turns every time the fish circles for an hour, we're going to get them. Now we say we get into a fish, big fish that takes off running full speed, and no matter what, you're just you're back in your harness, or you're on the rail and you can't stop him, get down. Get down, let's say this is the rail. Get all the way down. Sometimes I've seen David all the way down on the rail with his rod on the deck like this, holding on to it, and the rod is just doubled over like that, just going out into the water. The fish will stop. You're putting a maximum amount of pressure against that fish. Always fish in high gear. You're always in high gear until middle of the fight, towards the end of the fight, when the fish is laying down below the boat. And then you're going to drop it in the low gear so you have a little more torque on it and you can bring them up. Giants will test every knot you put on there, every connection you have, and every bit of skill you have or don't have is going to get put to the test. Great dad, nice fish. When you haven't done this before, yeah, it worked you pretty hard. A lot of our reels, you'll see a little, we take a felt pen and we mark it up here on, on strike. A lot of that's about 25 to 27 pounds. We're gonna set them all the day. We put that mark there so that when I do get bit, now, oh yeah, it's running, it's running, I bit. I know not to go too far. That line is where I wanna put it at strike. You know, that's where I want my drag setting to be. The very important factor, because if you go too far, you pop the hook, you pop the line, you pull the hook right out of the fish's mouth and you lose your fish right away. Initially, they're gonna make a run on you. You want that to happen. You want them to have a lot of tension, a lot of lines going off the reel, it's good tension. You want that to happen. 
later on in the fight, we can push the button and go forward and, and put some more tension on the fish there at the end when we need no body mass to just take the line in and out of the reel. You go too far at first, get excited, and it happens every trip. Oh, finally I fit, and someone hammers a drag like that, boom, you bust them off because they're going to run. You know, that, that initial run with the proper amount of tension on there is going to tire them out. Eventually when that run is done, he's going to lay down for you. What we call laying down is getting straight up and down for you and doing the tuna circle down below the boat. Eventually that's going to happen. But you can't just force him to do it by hammering the drag right away when he's taking a mad run away from the boat. Do so, you pop the hook, you break something off. No need when you feel a big tuna, pick your bait up and put it in gear and swing on them like a largemouth bass. When you do that, you pull it all right out of their mouth and you lose your fish. Put it in gear, let the hook set itself, the tension at the corner of their mouth, the fish is already swimming away from it, the line's coming out the corner of their mouth. When you put it in gear, it pulls that hook out of their throat, right up to the side, it catches in there and pins in there. You swing on them, you jerk everything out of there. That to me, you've got to take up, you know, you look at our lines in the water there. There's all these little, that continues all the way out to the bay. And you've got to get rid of all that to get a positive hook set. You've got to get that hook ripped out of your sardine and into the jaw of the tuna. This doesn't do anything. You know, the only thing that does anything is turning that thing there and hiding it. These fish are giants, and they're mean. They're, they're, they're really upset that they're hooked, and they test everything. Hook sizes. I wouldn't go any smaller than a 5 aught. We use some of the 5 aughts. Most of our bow rods have 6 aughts. Our kite gear has 7s and 8s on it. Circle hooks. Some of you want J-hooks. That's great. We have J-hooks on the boat as well. Fish them just like a circle hook. 130 pound test, 130 pound spectrum. It's matched to a triple X rod. You want to match your gear. You don't want to go into 100 pound test, 130 pound test, and go to a medium action rod. You know, like a, a 50 to 80 pound rod isn't going to cut it on the rail with a 250 pound fish hook to the end of it. Your rod's going to bottom out. You're not going to have any lifting power at all. The rod's just going to be doubled over and there's going to be no backbone left in your rod. It's not going to help you at all. You want to make sure you match that gear, match the right size reels to the right size rods. You know, some people, you're getting frustrated, you can't get a bite, you're going to drop down to your little reels and do that kind of stuff. I mean, it's your vacation, it's your shot at a giant fish. Do what you wish you want to do, but this is what's been working for us. Suggestions on tackle. Accurate reels are, are got a fine product coming out with their new accurate 30 wides, or 30 narrows and 30 wides are topless frames. Excellent reels for big fish fishing. Definitely uh, Jerry Brown and Isoline have the, the top end spectra. Their hollow spectra is by far superior than any of the rest. I would definitely suggest picking up that kind of spectra. And Seaguar Fluorocarbon has been a proven line for us. It doesn't break, good abrasion resistance, as in when the line is rubbing across the teeth of the tuna, it's holding up for us and we're landing those fish. Same type of gear, 50 wide Abbott, quadruple X Seekers, and it works very well. These rods are great rods for big fish. They have lots of lifting power. The reels are strong. <laughs> very, very seldom do you ever get spooled on one of these. Very seldom. That's a lot of line on here. You're looking at almost 800 yards. You want to you want to make sure you get a hold of one of the boats, one of any one of the captains, whatever boat you're getting onto. Get a hold of our offices. Get a hold of the captains, and make sure you got the proper tackle.
I like to come from aft to forward and I go about halfway through. At that point I change the hook angle direction and punch it out the other side. This is that other method that is uh, very popular on the kite and balloon and they live a long time. I, you know, I haven't, can't say that I fish it that often, but it is, it's a great method. And again, the nose hook, right through the hard part of the cartilage of the nose. It's where most, the angling world fishes, right there. They, they, they think that's the best thing. You do get a lot of bites winding that back in. A collar hook, kind of like we do for trophies. And, I don't know. He was really saying it's a good method. I'm going to try it on this trip. I'm going to try it a little bit. But I'm constantly listening for crew member on the bait tank or the guy on the kite that says, boil, you know, and I look around to see if I can spot where that boil is. What I want to do at that point, if my bait is in the zone, is I want to stimulate my bait. energy that produces around the, uh, the hot tuna bite is something you can only experience by being there. It is. You hook into a giant fish, he's going to put you to the test. You're, you, then you learn technique. Leave a 10 day or a 12 day trip from Cowtown or any of the other foreign banks we have down here, the long range stuff, and you've learned that much more, then it was a successful trip. Regardless of what your catch is, you're ready next time. Oh man. Yeah.